Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a horror film, The Red Book Ritual. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. An old witch begins a ritual by herself, spilling her blood on an open book and drawing symbols on the walls. She then commits suicide by hanging herself. The scene then cuts to a group of three friends, huddled closely on a table, with one lit candle in the middle. They plan to play a game that will let them communicate with spiritual entities. Sophie starts explaining the rules, while the girl named B, whose house they're currently using, looks apprehensive and nervous. Justin jokes around with Sophie to freak B out, while she's away looking for a red book that they can use for the game. B notices that there are blood stains on the wall, but before she can investigate it, her younger brother distracts her. After ushering her brother to sleep, B returns to the two on the game. B informs them that the book and a mysterious cat were already in the house when her family moved in. Sophie tells her that a witch was the one that originally owned the house before B's family, but the witch got involved in satanic rituals and disappeared one day. Justin pitches in, saying that the cat is said to be a demon who possesses its owners. They begin telling B a story a friend had told them once. The film starts off with the first story, titled Stray. A man back from war finds his wife's clothing stuck in barbed wire. He returns to their home, only to find it messy and destroyed, with his wife naked beside a cat. The wife is unresponsive to his calls. He proceeds to hunt outside with a crossbow. He sees their dog and takes him along back to their house. The man opens up a gift he bought for his wife and proceeds to drag the cat out. He soon regrets it when he hears his dog attack the cat and finds it dead. He buries the dead cat in the field and quietly changes his clothes, but he halts when he sees his wife returning with a dead rabbit. She starts making guttural noises, like an animal, seeking out the cat. When she finds out what happened, she quickly goes to the barn to kill the dog. As the man follows close behind her, he is then shocked upon seeing the supposedly dead cat alive again. The wife shoots an arrow at the man's shoulder when he enters the barn, so they begin fighting each other. When he successfully shoots the cat, it only disappears like a puff of smoke in front of them. The wife tries killing him, but fails when the man beats her with a shovel. He mourns for his dead wife, not until he sees the cat reappearing on the last spot he shot it. The man looks back at his wife to see her also resurrect like nothing happened, possibly because the cat possessed her and gave her the life. He is taken aback by the situation and decides to leave his wife with the cat. The scene returns to the three friends. They officially start playing the game, taking turns asking questions, while flipping the red book's pages to read out the answers. When B asks the game for proof that spirits are present along with them, they hear a woman scream nearby, which creeps them out. Sophie asks how they can quit the game. It tells them that they must read the book. Justin then reads aloud what was written on the pages. The second story begins, titled Little One. A couple just went through another failed pregnancy recently. As the husband enters the car, the wife is smoking and crying. The two of them launch into an argument as they drive through the night. The husband mentions that maybe having a baby isn't for them at this moment, which makes his wife angry, commanding him to stop the car. They abruptly stop when the wife sees a young boy in the middle of the road, his whole upper body exposed in the chilly evening, with evidently big scratches on his back. The wife assures the boy that it's okay, until an old man with a gun advises them not to take another step toward the boy. The old man calls the boy a demon and demands the couple to leave. The wife doesn't listen and tries to run toward the boy, but she gets fired at by the man. The husband punches the old man, helping his wife to their car. After putting the wife safely inside their car, he slowly approaches the boy, whose face is obscured by his hands and long hair. The old man continuously voices out not to go near the boy, but gets ignored. He takes the boy to his wife, who resumes comforting the boy. The husband approaches the old man on the ground, but halts when he sees the man's pitch black eyes. The longer he looks at the old man, his eyes begin to turn pitch black as well. As the young boy raises his head to stare at the wife, her face pales and her eyes widen in fear, signifying that the couple is also possessed by the demonic boy. The scene shifts to the three. They are confused when nothing happens after finishing the peculiar story. Justin's finger suddenly bleeds, and a drop of his blood is spilled on the book. When Justin directs his attention toward B, he recognizes the young boy standing behind her. But B and Sophie don't see him, so Justin brushes it off. He pushes the book to Sophie, so she starts reading the next one. The next story begins, titled Nose 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 Eyes. A little girl promptly wakes up from a nightmare she has about her father, with his eyes being misty and cloudy. She looks for her mother and tells her about it. The girl's uncle calls the mother, and she lies about her whereabouts to him. The girl questions her mother's behavior towards her uncle, but her mother responds that they have to be careful around him because he is after her father's insurance money. The girl recalls the time when her father got burned and asked her mom if they received insurance money from there as well. Her mother is impressed that she remembers this. Their house door suddenly begins making noises as the girl's uncle bangs on it, calling for them. 
The mother shushes the girl, and both of them start eating apples quietly. On the other hand, the girl's uncle constantly tries to figure out if anybody's at home. The two of them accidentally cough up, sharing a laugh. The mood sours immediately when the girl asks her mother to accompany her to her father's instead of going back to her room. The mother leads her alone in the living room. The girl is about to go to her room when she sees the door of her father's room opening by itself. Unable to help herself, she enters and closes the door. She sees her father's hands and feet tied to the bed, wearing an oxygen mask while he's asleep. The girl checks her father's eyes, and this wakes him up. She then removes his oxygen mask. He asks if she's eaten anything, but she only stares at him blankly. He instructs her to call her uncle and tell him to come when the mother is not at home. Again, the girl doesn't say anything and places the mask back in his mouth. The girl gets startled when she hears the door opening, so she hides under the bed. The mother enters and uses an eye speculum on her husband. She walks towards a cabinet, brings out a big syringe, and makes stabbing motions with it. She then opens a box with a pin inside it. Keeping eye contact with her husband, she takes out the safety measures on the sharp part of the pin. Meanwhile, the girl is observing her mother's footsteps nervously in her hiding place. She watches the shadows of her mother straddle her father's body. The father makes raspy noises, powerless of what his wife is planning to do with him. The mother is about to prick one of his eyes with the pin, but she halts upon hearing the girl's gasp. She scares her daughter and instructs her to come out. The mother explains that she's doing this because her husband told her to, and what they are doing is for her daughter to raise her because her father can't make money anymore. The girl doesn't believe her, and this angers her mother. She questions the girl if she wants to take her father's place instead, and after a few moments of resisting, the girl frighteningly lets her mother do what she wants to her father. The father could only look at the two helplessly. She goes outside for quite a while, and when she returns back to the room, the girl finds her mother sitting beside the bed, her father's body hidden under a blanket. Apparently, she killed her disabled husband for insurance compensation. The scene shifts back to the three again. Just like Justin, after Sophie finishes reading the story, a drop of her blood is spilled on the page. She then starts hearing and seeing the girl's father near them. She starts freaking out even when Justin tells her it's not real. Sophie stands up, but gets dragged away by an invisible entity. B starts reading the next story in the book, in hopes that finishing it will rescue Sophie from the game. The fourth story begins, titled Release. Carla is a doctor. She's trying to prolong and save her brother's life. Her brother is extremely sick and in a coma. A woman tells her that this isn't what her brother wants, but Carla persists with her decision to give him the drug to draw out his time and look for other ways to save him. She fetches another vial of the drug in the East Wing, which is an abandoned part of the building. She is forced to roam the area when she finds herself stuck there. She begins to experience paranormal circumstances as she looks for an exit and encounters a ghostly apparition of a scary-looking patient. She unintentionally drops the vial so she can hide. The patient takes the drug with him, and Carla follows after to retrieve it. Carla enters a dark room and grabs the vial when the ghost patient takes form in front of her. She runs away, only to find herself still locked inside the east wing. She closes her eyes as the patient approaches her, but is surprised when she's greeted by her brother. He expresses his disapproval towards taking the medication, and Carla sobs, finally agreeing to give her brother's life. She returns back to his room and touches her brother's face fondly. A woman wakes up and walks to Carla to comfort her. Carla then pushes the off button on her brother's life support system. It turns out, the paralyzed brother managed to communicate with his sister that way to deliver her his true wish. Back to the three, Justin anxiously asks B if it's all over, but she only responds, dazed that the story was about her dead mother, who was also a doctor. This is probably the book's way of targeting B's mourning heart towards someone she loves, so she can be more vulnerable. Justin wants her to elaborate, but before she could, her finger bleeds as well, and a drop of her blood is also spilled on the page. B notices that they all bled on the book after reading the stories. She concludes that they're giving life to the magic book that way. Justin doesn't care, and is glad everything is over, but the book flips to another story. B sees her dead mother walking towards a door, and she follows her. Justin then hears Sophie calling him, and he goes closer to the sound, only for his face to get grabbed by long, slender, monstrous hands, and for it to break his neck, killing him. B goes back to the room where she saw the book, and tears up the wall coverings, slightly to see what's behind it. She shakingly asks who it is controlling the Red Book game all this time, but B is met with silence. The fifth and last story is titled The Sermon. A beautiful young woman named Maggie lives in England and starts her day by pouring wine into another transparent glass bottle while her pastor father is preparing and cleaning himself. Maggie's father begins a sermon with her and a young man standing on opposite sides. The young man stares at Maggie as her father explains to the crowd his plan to deviate from the topic for the day to discuss the abomination of homosexuality they witnessed. 
The scene then flashes to Maggie doing a smelly workout with an older woman in a bed. After that, Maggie exits the woman's house, unbeknownst to her that the young man and his friend is stalking her. The two trespass on the woman's place to force her out for their whole village to see. The woman is tied and humiliated in front of Maggie, and she has to pretend that she doesn't know the woman because her father is watching. She sheds a tear after taking part in humiliating the woman and making eye contact with her. Meanwhile, Maggie's father continues to preach his words about the sins of homosexuality and how they all should protect their children. The glass bottle of wine is served by Maggie to the religious listeners, with her father telling them that it is the blood of Christ and will purify him. Maggie proceeds to let the young man her father drink too. Maggie's father resumed his sermon when people, as well as himself, begin to cough up blood. Everyone who drank starts showing symptoms of being poisoned as Maggie stands there and watches her doing unfold. Later that day, when Maggie deems everyone dead, she goes to the kitchen to grab a knife and goes towards the room upstairs, in which her lover is being kept. She sees the older woman being whipped by the young man's friend, so she slicks his throat. The story ends with Maggie and her lover running away on a grassy field. The story ends and returns to the three. B regains consciousness, only to find the wall coverings torn apart, which are full of demonic symbols drawn with blood. This was the witch's earlier ritual scene shown at the beginning of the movie, and the evil she has tied to it is now being released for her gain. A noose abruptly appears to choke B, but it gets cut. She sees her dead mother again and remembers that her brother is in danger. B returns to the living room to see her brother with Safi. She tells B that the witch wants pure blood, acting like she's completely succumbing to the witch's will. Sophie cuts the boy's finger to offer his pure blood to the Red Book as the last step to achieve the witch's transformation. Sophie then starts chanting in a foreign language and warns B that the witch is coming before killing herself with the knife she's holding. B instructs her brother to hide in his room as she hides in the living room to watch out for the evil entity that will come for them. Soon, the old witch begins to appear from the book and roams the area. Figuring out that the witch is gone, B quietly crawls to fetch the book. Her thoughts are proved wrong when she looks up, only to see the witch walking towards her, with her arms stretched open wide. The old witch grabs B's face and spits out smelly saliva into her mouth. Moments pass by, and B is seen standing still in the middle of the living room. Her brother emerges from his room and asks her if he can now come out. B answers him a yes, with a smile on her face. However, the old witch emerges from her body, indicating that the possession of B's body is successful. This means that the witch's ritual was all a preparation for a possession that will commence once people start playing the Red Book game in her house, all for the purpose of her own immortality. Unfortunately, B is the person the witch decides to use and control in the end, and that ends the peculiar film. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.